Now, let's turn our attention to inflammatory bowel disease. IBD is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the intestinal tract that is characterized by remissions and exacerbations. There are two forms of IBD, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease, or regional enteritis, is characterized by chronic recurrent inflammation of the mucosa of any segment of the bowel, but primarily the terminal ileum. Regional enteritis is limited to the small bowel. Lesions develop and ulcerate, causing abscesses and fissures in several segments of the bowel. As the disease advances, the bowel wall becomes severely fibrosed, thickened, and narrowed, which will affect the client's nutritional status. With Crohn's disease, the intestinal changes affect the small bowel. What is the client at risk for? Nutritional deficits, since the small bowel is where most of the nutrients are absorbed. Ulcerative colitis is characterized by diffuse inflammation of the mucosa and submucosa of the colon. The inflammatory process causes thickening and edema of the mucosa of the large intestine and the rectum. Chronic inflammation causes bleeding. Abscesses may form and become necrotic. The client might also have bloody stools. As a result of the chronic inflammation, the colon becomes shorter and narrower due to scarring and fibrosis. The etiology of IBD remains unknown, but researchers have identified some possible risk factors. Infectious agents, viruses or bacteria, an autoimmune reaction, food allergies, heredity, exposure to stressful situations, race. Since IBD is more common among Caucasians than among African Americans or Asians, and ethnic origins, since IBD is more common among Jewish people than among people of Middle European origin. The signs and symptoms of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are similar. Diarrhea. With Crohn's it can be severe and usually non-bloody. With UC, up to 20 stools a day with blood. Abdominal symptoms. With Crohn's, intermittent abdominal pain abdominal distension and flatulence with UC, abdominal cramping, abdominal distension, and left lower quadrant pain, fever with Crohn's. Fever is intermittent with UC. Fever develops during acute attacks. Appetite with both anorexia, nausea, and vomiting, weight with Crohn's, severe weight loss with UC, weight loss is common, fatigue with both, there is fatigue, tenesmus with Crohn's. It is rare with UC. It is severe. Nutritional deficiencies. With Crohn's, it is common. With UC, rare. The diagnostic tests for IBD include stool examinations for blood, mucus, and pus, stool cultures for microorganisms, CBC differential, hematocrit, hemoglobin, barium enema studies, colonoscopy or proctoid sigmoidoscopy, and biopsy of intestinal tissue and cytologic studies. What are the nursing diagnoses for clients who have IBD? Diarrhea, related to acute inflammation of the intestinal tract. Pain, acute or chronic, related to the inflammatory process. Altered nutrition, less than body requirements related to nausea and vomiting. Fluid volume deficit, related to severe diarrhea and coping, individual, ineffective related to the severity of intestinal symptoms. IBD is treated with medications, rest, diet, adequate fluids, stress control, and surgery. Important medications used to treat both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis include antidiarrheals, corticosteroids to reduce inflammation, sulfasalazine, trade name azulfidine, also an anti-inflammatory drug, blood replacement, anticholinergics to control bowel contractions, anti-anxiety drugs, and antibiotics to control infection. Clients who are very ill with IBD should receive IV fluids and possibly total parenteral nutrition, TPN, to allow the bowel to rest and to improve nutritional status. Also, it is important to measure and record the amount, color, Frequency and consistency of stools. Remember to assess intake and output and hydration status. Cleanse the skin around the anal area if it has been irritated by contact with diarrheal stool. 
Gently wash the area with mild soap and water, pat dry, and apply a thin coat of Vaseline or mineral oil. Because dietary and lifestyle changes are very important, instruct clients who have IBD to plan rest periods. Try to avoid becoming overly tired. Eat a high-protein, high-calorie, no-fat, non-residue diet. Avoid caffeine, pepper, and alcohol. Do not smoke. Eat small, frequent meals rather than one large meal. Keep track of calories to ensure adequate consumption. Drink adequate fluids. Try supplements like Ensure or Vivanex. Keep track of weight and weight changes. Try to establish a regular time every day to have a bowel movement. Observe which situations and people are causing stress. Learn how to relax. Clients who have ulcerative colitis require surgery when their disease is intractable or complications arise, such as fistulas, abscesses, or bowel obstruction, or perforation. Types of surgeries for ulcerative colitis include total proctocolectomy with a permanent ileostomy. Total colectomy with a continent ileostomy, also called an ileal reservoir, or a cock pouch. Total colectomy with an ileoanal anastomosis, and creation of an ileoanal reservoir. Some clients with Crohn's disease may require a colostomy or ileostomy to improve their quality of life.